All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, using center lines. And so center lines are powerful tools. So whenever, whenever we draw, we're always going to want to use a center line. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Now I can do it one of two ways. I can either start with a center line, which is best, or let's say, sometimes I'll have people say like, or not say, let's say I, I drew something where I said, all right, well, I'm going to draw a little, draw a little, a little vase. And and let's see. And we said, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and draw this little vase. And, and this little vase is... Um, You know, it comes over here and it kicks out. Love the little thing that comes out a little bit, and then it comes in. And usually, when we draw something like that, like this, what happens is that we have something that looks like. Let's go ahead and do a really. Now, most people will do a much better job than this, but you know, you can have something that's that's this off where you've got. See if I can get away with making this just a little bit darker without having to go nuts on me. So I might have one that's side that's like this. And again, this is a very extreme example, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. For anyone who's drawn and tried to draw something the same on both sides, it's very, very difficult. Okay. So how, there's a technique we can use to help us with the symmetry part of this. Um, you know, we want to, we could check to make sure our ellipse is, str is straight across, but all that good stuff. But first, and again, this is a very extreme example. If someone looks at that and goes, wow, that person can't draw at all. Uh, we're, I'm really trying to, to exaggerate, uh, again, how bad it can be. No one's ever drawn something quite this, this off. Uh, so this is an extreme example, but Let's say, now I'm a left-handed person, so that means that usually the, the, the side that I find that I want to emulate is on the left. If you're right-handed, you're probably going to want it on the right. So the first thing we want to do for symmetry and for mirroring technique is we're going to use a center line. Now. If you're, if you, you know, you could draw your center line by hand, and I'm going to make this darker than what I would ever normally draw a center line because you want to draw it, erase it, so that no one ever knows you used it. You know, you, this is part of our illusion. You know, just like magicians, you, you know, you don't want it to be obvious how the illusion was created. But we need a center line to start. The next thing we need to do, and curves are the hardest. If I had something that was like, the, you know, something that was very square, like let's say we had a square neck and you know whatever and let's let's say it was a hmm, a bottle. A bottle is fairly easy. There might be a little bit of a an arch to the, to the top but um, that might be, well maybe we'll make that into the cork or something because we can, that's already at the top. You can't hardly see what's going on off, off there so let's um, Let's, let's go ahead and just take that off. Let's say this was the top. Let's move this down just a bit. But this is our top right here. And again, let's say it was something like uh, something that has cylinders. Like I have like there's a little spray bottle that has a little spray part. You know, so it's got, you know, that on top of this. And then this the container for the water is really just another... It's a cylinder, so if we straighten a cylinder out, well, it's, it's a rectangle. Uh, very, very simple because it has no curves. So if I had a center line there, we have a center line. This is, you know, as long as the center line's straight. Wow, that ain't happening today, it looks like. Didn't do my warm-ups and it's showing. Okay, let me try to straighten this out.
So again, that's that might be straight enough to use for a center line. If it's not straight enough, um, it keeps moving because it's a sketchbook, so it's it's movable. I could just come in here and just straighten it out, okay, and get it just super straight. But again, this is easy because all I have to do is make sure that this is the same distance as this all the way down, right? Not a big deal. Curves are much more complex animals. And so if we're going to do this with a curve, and let's say we started off here, which is supposed to be the widest part of that ellipse, we're going to start, and we always start with the starting point and the stopping point. So this is the starting point, this is the stopping point, or this is the starting, and that's the stopping. But we're going to pick along this curve at least 10 points for the curve. And usually we'll, we'll always put one down sort of in the middle of, of where the curve starts, you know, where that starts to curve out. Put one there. Uh, the curves are the hardest, so usually that will have, you know, maybe I'll put one here and one there. And the more complex the curve, the, the you know, the more points you might want. But usually we want between eight and ten to start. If we have to add a couple, that's fine. But if you get too many, it's going to be a little nonsensical. Now understand that I'm making these dark little dots. I would never do this on one of my drawings. Because again, those little dots are going to be, you know, just going to be usually going to be harder to get rid of. It's always, you always, you know, so um, unless I made it really, really soft. But I'm just trying to put the dots in. And we got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got ten dots. Probably want one right here. So there's eleven. Um, I think I can probably get away with that. Anyone who's done computer art, if they're like, man, that starts to look like vector. Guess what? This came before vector. Vector is based on this technique. Okay. So anyone who's worked in Adobe Illustrator or I uh, can't, there's so many different little guys out there, Corel Draw. And then you got tons of little ones that are sort of, you know, freeware out there that do the same thing. Uh, that's what it's based on. So we're going to use... Again, this is for our objects that are symmetrical, which means they're mirrored or the exact same on each side if we cut them in half. And that's what makes this possible, because they're supposed to be the exact same side, exact same thing. This got a little weird towards the bottom, got a little thicker. And so I'm going to try to see if I can... Okay. All right, so that's going through the middle there. But what we need for this to work is we have to have the points, we have to have a center line. The next thing we have to do is we have to have, um, we have to have straight lines going across, going across our, uh, this might be a little big. Um, we have to have, yeah, straight lines going across this thing. So we go ahead and line this up. It's got a little triangle window here in the middle that we can go ahead and line this up again nice and straight. And again, I could do this, I, I usually sketch these by hand, but just to show you guys, well that got off a little bit. That's all right, I'll straighten it in a moment. Um, so usually I'll draw these by hand. Okay, so maybe that's, I'm gonna turn this. No, that's fine, so okay, yes, yeah, it's, they're, they're both fine. It just shows me how to whack my ellipse is. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna come over here again, get this all nice and straight on there. And I'm trying to actually cut this little dot right in the middle. Uh, and it's kind of hard because I'm trying to look around and through my little, um, you know, this, this triangle. Um, I'm guessing if this, this seems like these are going, let's see if we can get these over here. Yeah, there we go. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and can line this up nice and straight with that there. Bring in our line. We have to have these perpendicular lines. Um, and if I uh, just use the correct term, but for those that, true corners, it's got to be 90 degrees or a true corner to that center line, or as we call it, perpendicular. So we need those perpendicular lines. Need them, need them, need them. Got to have them. Um, so 
So we're going to go ahead and draw that across. See if we can go ahead and, yeah, there we go. Okay. Hmm. Let's see if we can. Use this backwards, backwards. Oh, we have to turn it up, don't we? That's all right. That'll help us to get here. That'll be our next one. I have to push these out, by the way. I just realized it's not be might not be long enough. Okay. And so again, we have to have these. These, these nice perpendicular lines or for this to work. Now sometimes it's easier if we turn it like this and so sometimes it's easier to see you know if this thing is 90 degrees by turning it up. Okay and so don't be afraid to to get it right <laughs> I guess but anyway so we're gonna go ahead and say alright these are these are then going straight across that line. So now for this to work, and again, if I'm sketching, I would just go ahead and use my my thumb and the and the pencil. I would go ahead and use it that way, or we could, um, if we wanted to, if we had like a piece of paper, I could pull out my little sketchbook newsprint because it's just cheap. Uh, rip a piece out of there and let's say okay well we've got their little a little piece of paper here and this is my my this will be my measuring device so this right here will be my measuring device and this little this spare piece of paper um, and what I can do now is I can take this piece of paper and I'll just, again, I can measure this with my finger, or if I wanted to make it more accurate, I can measure from here to the center. And then we have to make sure, you know, if we come from the center over, that it's equal distance. Okay, what we've done is we've, we've mirrored this distance here has been mirrored over this distance there. So that's what we're doing. We're baking, we're, we're mirroring. And that's what this technique is called. It's called mirroring because we're taking... Now, we're going to do some little notation here because we don't want to get lost in all the different marks. So this one goes here. How do I know the difference? I'm going to put a little triangle underneath it. Okay. And I'm going to come over here and go, okay, where's that triangle? Where does the triangle land? And this triangle should land right about, right about there. Okay. And we've got to bring it down onto the line. That's a little bit above the line. That one's a little bit above the line. We've got to make sure that's on the line. Uh, then we're going to come over here again, measure, and again we've got it, it hits the, the line right there, and I'm going to put two little triangles. So again, I'm trying to keep from getting lost in all these little marks. This can become, you can just imagine with 11 different marks, this is going to start to get re can get really weird really quickly. But again, by doing this, we're going to have placement of the exact point the other one had two, this one has three. So again, so I know which one I'm using. And of course, I'm left-handed, so I'm going from the left, the left side over the right side. Um, I need it to be on that line. The line doesn't go long enough, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to get this thing, and I'm going to lengthen my line. Okay? And so we're going to end up with a little dot-to-dot, -dot, but this dot-to-dot -dot is the, the exact same point on the opposite side and that's what we need to have this thing be symmetrical. Now, our, I've mentioned before that our eyes are pretty awful at measuring. I should have put four little triangles here, but it was so far out I didn't need to. But, and then I, I probably need to change my symbols a little bit, so I, but uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and mark that there. We'll put an X and a little triangle so I can start that way I don't have to worry about putting 12 little you know little triangles 
as I'm doing this. Let's see, I measure from this to the center, and that's the center right there. And again, we'll put like a little X and a little X. You know, whatever. I can vary it. I could have like gone to letters, I guess. Doesn't matter what I use. I'm just trying to keep from getting confused. And there's probably, you guys are probably watching this going, man, there's a much more sophisticated way. And I'm sure there is. <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind. But uh, again, I just need to keep it clear. So maybe we could do X, you know, O or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and again, I can go ahead and mark it on that line. And this is, you know, again, where I should be going through here. If you use this technique, the first time we use it, again, just like all the different techniques we've learned in this class, it can be very cumbersome. And again, sometimes people are like, why in the world would I do this? But what it does is it helps us so we can, you know, sometimes there's people that, they would they would like go nuts if they could keep their drawings you know make them symmetrical we've got the we've got the answer and it just it, it clears up so many issues that people have as they draw and it makes it fun because if you're not struggling as much that's cool that's fun who doesn't want more fun when they draw I know I could usually I could use some more fun and so if you get used to using this, and again, I use this for hand sketching. I don't get out the, I just draw my center, my, my perpendicular lines by hand. I draw my center line by hand. I measure by hand. And when you get used to doing this, you can do this very, 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 very quickly. Okay. It really, and it's a game changer. All right. So now I've got all my points over here. Now what? I can tell you what right now. We're, I was trying to mirror, but I can tell you right now, this foot's a little small on this vase, but that's not what we're worrying about right now. If I changed it, if I said, well, I need to change this drawing, I could redraw it, right? Move my points over there, and then make sure they're the same over here. So again, this can be fluid, but here's what I do. I'm a lefty, and this is on the left side, and I need to draw this, and if I draw this like this, I can't see my dots to compare this line to that line, because I'll be covering it with my hand. Yes, I could try to do some weird thing where I lift my hand up, but here's the easiest thing. Again, with you righties, if you've drawn this over here and you go to draw the left, again, your hand's gonna be covering. So here's what you do. Boom. So there's a couple things that we, we uh, advantages that we have when we do this. When we turn something upside down, it's easier for our eyes to perceive differences. And so, if you ever want to check your symmetry, and some, again, artists that have really good eyes, they'll just take this trick and they'll, they'll turn something upside down very, very quickly. They'll flip their board over, take a look, and then flip, flip it back up and make the changes. And that's where we want you to go. I want you, we want you to, to end up where you're like, yeah, no big deal. I can make changes. I, it's not symmetrical. I know what to do. No problem. Uh, so as, as we're doing this, as we're dealing with this, that's, what, that's where we want to go. We're looking for the ability to... Be able to go, yeah, that's wrong. Okay, no worries. I'll go ahead and I'll I'll get I'll make it right. Okay, so again, now even though we've got all these dots, the reason we're turning this upside down is because it would still be very easy to to hit that dot with an arc going the wrong way, or projecting a little a little differently than it's supposed to, and and all these different things. So this is to help us. So again, that we get, we, we don't just like, you know, it's clunky. This is not clunk, clunky, this flows. This is kind of clunky. So that means we'd probably hit that, banked that corner just a little differently than it should be, than it should be. This then needs to come, you know, come out a little bit. This needs to flow. So it, it needs to actually round a little bit. So, and now that's looking better. So again, that it's, it can be, you know, we can sometimes we'll, oh, I can connect the dots now. And, and we don't we don't we don't do it really well. We want this line to flow, so we have to go. Well, let's see. This one needs to maybe push out a little bit. This one needs to round, you know, maybe just in just a scotch. This one needs to then uh, maybe not round out so much, just a little bit, because there's a lot of distance between these marks, and we need to be able to, like this little arc through here needs to, like feels like this arc should just push out just like a scotch. 
just a bit, just a little tiny bit more. And by doing that, we've got, we've now got this, this object fairly symmetrical. We also have, um, we can also mark the major minor axis. So I had this was the, on the this was the, the, the length or the, of, of the minor axis. This is the major axis. That's the midpoint. We could then mark this to make sure that this is the same up here on, on this, right? So now we've got, these are the major axis points, that's a major axis point, that's a major axis point. Whoops, that didn't help me. Got these two little ears coming off of there. This is the major axis point, this is the minor axis point, that's the minor axis point. Uh, we still have to turn this in, and this was what I was saying about that, that foot. The foot's a little funky. But, again, if I, if I want to, I could say, all right, well, we'll just go ahead, and that was a mistake. Well, and again, this would be light. We, we could do this, no problem. We'll say, all right, well, we're going to go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and do this. Now, again, when you get really good at this, because we've got a center line, and because everything else is, is, in, is symmetrical, it's, sometimes it's, it's much easier to then go, and we're going to do the same thing over here. So again, if we, and usually I'll, I would say, you know, for the beginner, do this upside down. And that doesn't even mean beginner. I know people that are professionals that do this all the time because they're like, look, this is not for the faint of heart. Okay, this is some serious stuff. But again, very quickly, you can go, yeah, okay. Uh, or if, again, if, I can't, if I'm having real problems matching this, this the same one, well, then I can go ahead and set new points over here. Put the new points over there, you know, it's, it's no big thing. And by doing this, we have something that doesn't look like, you know, <laughs> this, that it can't, it can't stand. This is, you know, this wouldn't be able to stand on its own uh, as far as it goes. So this would be something much, could actually stand. Uh, it's actually just a tiny bit wider, but at least we're in the ballpark now. Um, this is, by the way, I can tell right now that I don't have this, Symmetrical. You might say, well, well, how do you do that? Because this distance here isn't the same as that distance there. It's not off by much. It's off by maybe uh, just over a 32nd of an inch, not quite a 16th. So we're off about that much. So again, that can be, again, the difference between something being symmetrical versus it not being symmetrical. And again, now we've got a foot that will actually... I wasn't worried about that because I was trying to just mirror one side or the other. But once we did that, I was like, I can't let that stay. That'll keep me up all night long having that foot like that. Um, this will now stand up and it won't tip over. So now we've got our ellipse. We can say, all right, well, we just got, you know, we got to put our arc there, put our arc there, put our arc here, put our arc here, you know. And we could go ahead and then go ahead and, and just finish up the ellipse. This ellipse, if we look side to side, quadrant to quadrant, uh, this ellipse again is a little, it, it rounds out here. It's pushing out when it needs to come in. Okay. So again, we're using the four quadrants for symmetry. This is symmetry comes out. Whoops. There we go. All right, so this then comes through there. Like that. This then is gonna come in. Whoops. Just seems to be just through here, just a bit. It seems a little flat. But anyways, we could go ahead and round that off just a bit more. And now we've got that we've got that ellipse, and then this is the side where that then hits into that ellipse. And so now we've got something that again is fairly symmetrical using the mirroring technique. So for mirroring technique, what we have to have is so we have to have a center line, right? That's we've got to have that. We also have to have a side that we want to mirror. Remember, this was my terrible side. This is the, the old side right through here. 
and that just wasn't working. And like I said, most people's are not that bad, but they're you know so but they they're rarely if ever symmetrical, um, and sometimes they're really way off. Again, so what we do is we put down a straight center line. We then find between eight to ten points. Now I put eleven. If you need to put a couple of extra ones, don't worry. But just understand that sometimes if we put too many, uh, it, it can, we can start to actually. It doesn't help us. So after after you get past fifteen, uh, it starts to break down. Uh, all of a sudden, you're it really starts to look. You know, you, you can't hardly draw because you're so freaking out about you know being in the exact spot. Um, so. But then we need our dots. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dots. Um, so once you've got your dots, then we have to have the lines that are perpendicular uh, going across here. Then after we have those lines that are perpendicular lines, and they're perpendicular to the center line. This is the center line. Uh, just a, just a, 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 a and, and always remember that. Major axis is here. The minor axis is always on the center line. That's why this is so important, is because we use the center line to also help us with our ellipses. Um, so we've got our perpendicular lines in, uh, connecting every dot. And then once we've got that, we make sure that we have the same distance to, from the dot to the center line. And we take that same distance and bring it over here to this side so that this the dot as long as it's along and this is perpendicular that's in the same place now if I had the line was if the line wasn't perpendicular let's say we had a line let's say we had a bottle our bottle over here and I'm checking for its symmetry uh, this is actually getting smaller it's coming in a little bit so we need to do something like that but let's say this was one of my dots and I had a line that was like this that's not going to work. I could I could make this equal to that, but that won't be in the same place. It has to be perpendicular across that center line, so that that you know, for in order for it to be in the same place, it has to be perpendicular. That relationship has to be that way. So we want to make sure that this is perpendicular, and then we just make sure that we we measure. And again, I could measure by hand, or I used my little my little extra piece of paper. And what do we do? We marked the dot. We marked the center and then we brought it over here and lined this up with the center and made sure that the dot was equal distant. Okay, by doing this, you will have things that are just so beautifully symmetrical and it will really kick your drawing up to the next level. Uh, when we first start drawing, though, it can still, again, it can feel kind of clumsy and cumbersome. So I want you to do this uh, at least, you know, 10 times, uh, 10 more times. Do not abandon this. This will. You know, if you ever have problems, this is the solution. Um, but give it a shot; it will really help your drawing. But what I want you to do is is find some things that are sym that are symmetrical, bottles or things like that around the house. Um, set yourself a goal and try to draw one a week using uh, this idea of center lines uh, and using you know little dots and then measuring from the dot to the center line and then from the center line back over, and and use that in your drawing. And again, it will really get your drawing into a much better place. And you'll be able to do stuff that will just, again, be much more symmetrical, much better, much more quickly. And that's what this is about. This whole course is to get you a much better drafts person, a much better artist, a much better drawing uh, person, much more quickly. And, and even though we're dealing with representationalism, uh, and some people might even say realism, but if I'm doing, you know, um, if I'm doing abstraction and I've got the shape and I need the shape to be symmetrical and I don't know how to make it symmetrical, I'm in trouble. If I'm just going to eyeball it, good luck. You know, even really seasoned artists have issues with symmetry. And so I've seen artists that have been drawing for 30 years and they still struggle with symmetry. So this is the solution. So give it a shot. It will really help you. All right. Have a good one. Take care.